be respectful okay. of your time. Yes, sir. All right. So, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. Thank you for downloading. And thank you for subscribing to the latest edition of the 12 Kyle podcast. I'm your boy, 12 Kyle. And uh, we have a very, very special guest this week. Uh, this uh, guest that we have here is actually one of the reasons why we are smiling as alumni of uh, South Carolina State University. You guys have been following the podcast. You know that that's where I went to school. Uh, we have today the head basketball head basketball coach, uh, Mr. Tony Medlock. Coach, what's going on? What's going on, Kyle? How you doing, my man? Good, good, good to see you. Good to hear from you. How's everything? Everything's good, man. I'm just trying to figure it out in the bird. You know how it goes. Good, good, good. Uh, it goes without saying that we're happy to have you in Orangeburg uh, as the uh, head basketball coach. This is your first year. Um, before we get into the season and everything, I want to go back a little bit, Coach. Uh, where did it start for you? Like, where did you grow up? Where were you born? Uh, that type of thing. Well, I'm from Memphis, Tennessee, uh, born okay. and raised there. Um, played my college basketball there. It, it was Memphis State at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, me and Penny Hardaway played together, had a good run. My senior year went to the Elite Eight, uh, one game away from the Final Four. So, uh, you know, just coming from Memphis and b being in that basketball city and that basketball town, uh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm thrilled, man, to be, to be part of this game. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, I did not know you were born and raised. I, I, I knew that's where you went to school and we'll, we'll touch on that in just a few, because I'm a huge basketball fan. Um, so growing up there, how did you get involved with basketball? Because, uh, basketball is, you know, is, is a sport particularly because you're just a couple of years younger, older than me. I'm sorry. Uh, how, how did you get involved with basketball? Basketball was huge when we were coming up. Well, Memphis is a, is a hotbed for basketball. Uh, any, any, anybody who knows anything about Memphis basketball knows that that is the sport there. So <clears throat> growing up in Memphis, you know, probably started out playing football like most most guys. <laughs> but then you kind of evolve into different sports and, and basketball became my, my first love. OK, OK. Um, were there any uh, older siblings that kind of introduced you or parents or anybody? How, how did you just really get involved and, and start playing? Was it? And were you influenced by anybody or anything like that? No, it's just a neighborhood thing. Okay. You know, grow, growing up in I'm, I'm growing up in Orange Mound, uh, Tennessee is what we call it in Memphis. Uh, growing up there and and being around uh, great athletes, uh, Melrose High School is is where it's, it's a neighborhood school. My mom, my dad, okay. uh, my uncles, uh, you know, a lot of people went to that school, and it's a neighborhood school. And so it's one of those deals that you just kind of you playing basketball in the park, uh, in the backyard. Uh, and it just kind of, you know, uh, becomes part of your life. No doubt. No doubt. Now, you mentioned Memphis State. I, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about some of the great players that played there. I think my first introduction to Memphis State probably was those teams in the mid 80s. I mean, you had guys like Keith Lee, William Bedford, mm -hmm. um, uh, Andre Turner, uh, mm -hmm. Vincent Askew. And then I think the time that you were there, uh, you played with Elliot Perry uh, with, the, with the big goggles. Uh, and then mm -hmm. the aforementioned uh, Penny Hardaway, who's the head coach of Memphis now. Um, and then there were guys that came after you like uh, CDR, uh, Chris Douglas Roberts, um, the late Lorenzen Wright, rest mm -hmm. in peace. Um, and of course, Derek Rose and many others. I don't, I don't want to start naming names, but those guys <laughs> just kind of jump out. Cause you know, you start naming names, you know, people, oh, well, you forgot about, you forgot. And yeah, I know, trust me, <laughs> Memphis, they they produced uh, ballers. Um, so I said that to say this, why, even just growing up in Memphis, why did you chose to stay at home at Memphis State? Well, first of all, Kyle, man, I'm, in, I'm really impressed for you to name off some of those greats, man. <laughs> uh, you know, Keith Lee and and William Bedford. You know, Be William Bedford is a, is a Melrose grad. Okay. Uh, you talk about, you know, Elliot Perry, who was my backcourt mate for three years. And then, of course, Penny Hardaway was was one year. So you've named some guys, man, that I'm telling you that that are great Memphis basketball players and are legends there. And uh, I was just glad to be a part of the, of, of their of their family. Uh, but yeah, growing up in Memphis, man, it's one deal. It's, it's one thing that every Memphis kid. Now, everyone's not going to be able to stay and go at Memphis mm -hmm. and go to Memphis. But that's your dream. Okay, that's your dream. And just because. You know, everything in Memphis is about Memphis Tiger basketball. Like I said, and when I was growing up at Memphis State and, and, and you you grow up and you're watching those games come on the local channel at, you know, at, at replays and all this stuff back in the day uh, <laughs> when they didn't show it live. 
Uh, so it was it's one of those things that, like I say, everybody in that city that that's, that's always a Tiger fan. So growing up a Tiger fan, uh, uh, Coach Finch, who's my coach, yes, uh, yes. Then, great uh, basketball player. No, no doubt. Uh, you know, he was he was a legend in the city. And uh, he went to school with my mom and dad. He's a Melrose okay. graduate. Okay. So, you know, so it, it was one of those deals that I probably didn't have a choice, even though I was, you know, highly recruited coming out of high school. I, I had no choice. I, I had no choice. I was going to have to go to Memphis, and which right. I wanted to, and, and I did. Okay. Just just out of curiosity, what other, what other schools were recruiting you? Uh, well, I probably could have, you know, Louisville was, was, was high okay. on my list. Okay. Uh, Oklahoma State, uh, DePaul, well, you know, probably were the, the, the top schools that – I, they were being recruited by at that time. Okay, and those those are some heavy hitters right there back in back in those times. Because I think when you were in school, were you guys still in the Metro Conference, or was, or yes. was it? Okay. yes, okay, uh-huh. yes. So my my freshman year was it's a Metro Conference. So you know you talk about Louisville and, yes. and Cincinnati and those guys. Man, Virginia Tech was yes. in that league. Florida State. I mean, mm-hmm. it was a big time basketball league. You know, my when I first got into college. Yeah, definitely. You you came at a time like I said. You're just a couple of years older than me, but you came at a time where, you know, you really had to hoop. I mean, like it really wasn't any in between. I mean, like you could you if you stepped on that basketball court, you had to bring it. So you tra- so you you transitioned from being a player, you know, and, and growing up and everything and obviously getting into coaching. So that I know that speaks to the love of the game that you have. Um, and then fast forward to uh, a couple of years ago, you were at Ole Miss um, mm-hmm. and served as the interim coach and then. Uh, you get the opportunity to uh, go back to Memphis and coach alongside, uh, you know, like you said, your former back co- court mate, Penny Hardaway. What was that experience like at, at Memphis going back to your alma mater and actually coaching? Because, you know, on paper, I know it looks good, but, you know, sometimes going back and being a legend and, and being back in the hometown, you know, there's certain levels of pressure that come along with that. So uh, how did you how, how was that for you? Uh, it was great. You know, anytime you get in this coaching business, in, which I did uh, in 1996, you know, my first job was at Arkansas State, which is in Jonesboro, Arkansas. Mm-hmm. And that's only an hour from Memphis. Okay. So I was there for nine years. So uh, it was one of those deals that, you know, that's how I really made my name in this business by recruiting and by recruiting the city of Memphis. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, and, and always my dream was to get back home. It took a while now from, from 96 to 2018. You know, I was all over the place from 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 Jonesboro, Arkansas to to UTEP, I went to UTEP okay. uh, in El Paso. Uh, I was at Auburn, uh, Ole Miss, and then I was finally able to get back home. So it was it was a long journey, man, but it was something that I always dreamed about. And then when Penny got the job, of course, you know he made the phone call and we talked, and and it was it was you know it was it was easy to do. So it wasn't a hard sell for Penny to sell you in Memphis, was it? No, no. Like I said, from day one, man, when you when you get in this profession, uh, you know, say so like I said, Memphis is home and anybody who's been around a Memphian and knows and been around that city knows it's, it's a it's a, a place, man, that if you're from there, you know, a lot of people don't never leave, yeah. you know, just because, you know, they're, they're, that's their home. And Memphis has always been there for me. OK, OK. So then the opportunity comes uh, last spring. You get a phone call and, and you come down and interview and you get a chance to, after being, you know, a, a, you know, head assistant for so many years, you get a chance to come to Orangeburg, South Carolina, and become the head men's basketball coach at South Carolina State University. What went into your decision to come to the MEAC and uh, basically try to resurrect this program? Uh, probably the first thing was, was Stacy Danley, uh, yeah. athletic director here. Uh, we knew each other and got a chance to know each other well in Auburn. Okay. Uh, while, while I was there as an assistant coach, uh, he was there. He was a former football player there. He worked there. Uh, so it, that's where we got the chance to know each other. And we always stayed in contact. And that's what, you know, that's what athletic does for you. You know, you meet somebody, uh, his his um, sons played AU uh, basketball with my son. So, you know, it's one of those deals that you get a chance to to see each other out on the road, going to those AAU games and uh, get a chance to talk and get a chance to know each other's family. And uh, we always stayed in contact. And when this job came open, uh, he made a phone call and and we talked about it and, and uh, you know, we, we was able to work it out. Sounds good. I, I, I've been very impressed with what Stacey Daniels has done. As like I said, as an alum, as a former football player, I've been very impressed with, you know, how he's been able to, you know, write in the ship and everything. And, and that's just, you know, the school pride in me. Um, so I, I definitely, you know, want to be the, at least the last person to welcome you, you know, to Orangeburg uh, to be the head basketball coach. Now, you know, when you came aboard, uh, we've had we had had some lean years to you know to say the least. Uh, last year's team uh, had you know just one win in the entire season. 
Um, what has been your mindset as far as as far as kind of resurrecting this program? Because, uh, you know, winning and subsequently losing can be a culture. You know that all too well. So what was your mindset in as you as you assembled your staff and brought in the kind of players that you wanted? What was your mindset in, in, in changing the, the culture at South Carolina State? Well, the first thing you do, like you said, is to change the culture. And, th and that comes with just talking about uh, holding guys ac accountable. Uh, two things that we talk about every single day is being accountable uh, and being disciplined. Mm -hmm. And we try to do that on everything that we do on and off the court. And so I think that's where it started. And it started from day one when I got the, you know, got the job, had that first workout in the spring and then came back in the summer with workouts. And then in the fall, it's all been about those two things. And uh, the guys have bought in. You know, it's, it's, it's tough when you come in as a new coach. You got, you know, you're saying new terminology, new philosophy. Uh, you know, I, I coach really hard for these guys. But the reason I, I think I'm able to coach them hard because they I think they know I love them. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to treat them all like my son. Uh, I'm going to be on them. I'm not going to let anything slide. Uh, so I think they know that. So it started out, you know, of course, starting off the year at 0 and 5, you know, and, 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 and it's hard one when you guys are trying to figure out, hey, is this stuff going to work that coach is saying right, every right. single day? Is it going to work? Is it going to work? And they never doubted it. They never doubted it. And uh, so now for us to, to you know, uh, start the season out 0 and 5 and now at 10 and 10, uh, I think that's just saying a lot about what these guys have, have done and, and trying to buy into everything we're trying to do. Coach, I'm, I'm interested to get your mindset because I, I have this debate with my friends all the time. Uh, earlier this year, this calendar year, you guys went up against Duke. You went up to Durham, uh, and that's no nothing strange for us because our basketball team uh, has always played against Duke, even when I was back in school back in the, in the mm -hmm. early 90s. Uh, and, you know, I think Coach, I think the world of Coach K, I think he's a great coach. I mean, legendary Hall of Fame coach, obviously. Uh, and, you know, if, from watching those games on TV, those games can be somewhat intimidating because you got the Cameron crazies and everything like that. But you give me the mindset of the, the pregame speech you probably instilled in your kids that they're just as good as these McDonald's all Americans and all of these kids like that. What was your mindset going into that game? And what did you tell the team? Because it, it, obviously we didn't win, but you know, we, I thought we played and I saw, I saw that game. We, I thought, especially, you know, once probably got to about the second half, we kind of mm -hmm. you know got, it kind of got away from us. We started doing things that we probably weren't used to doing, but what did you tell them like prior to the game coach? Well, one thing you talk about going to a game like that, it's an opportunity, man. This is something you're going to talk about when you're 30, 40, 50, 60 years old, and the story's probably going to change. It's going to be a guy <laughs> that played five minutes. He's going to say, hey, man, I gave, I gave Duke 25 at Cameron Indoor. You right. know, we all do that. You know, that, that's part of being an athlete. Guilty uh, as so, charged. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Me, me, me too. And so it's one of those deals. So we talked about the opportunity, man. You're playing, you're playing Ed Cameron. You're playing Coach K his last year. Yeah. So why not go in there and try to shock the world? I mean, that's what that was our mindset going into the game. Of course, I mean, you you know, going to play Duke, you know, they're one of the best teams in the country. I think they were ranked second when we went yeah, in there and played were. them at the time. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's a really good program, of course. One of the best programs in, in the country. Uh, but, you know, we went in there with the mindset of, hey, let's go in here and give it all we got. And whatever happens, happens. You know, you know, everybody expected us to lose. Uh, and, you know, we get that. But, you know, it, it was a great opportunity for my young men, something that they can think about and talk about the rest of their lives. Indeed. Indeed, Coach. And I, I couldn't I like that mindset because you you go in basically instilling in your team that they can win like they belong on the floor with you know, these all Americans and all that stuff like that. So I, I like that idea and that mindset. Uh, you mentioned it earlier. Uh, the team is 10 and 10 at the time of this recording, uh, going into what we call the meat of uh, conference play in the uh, mid Eastern athletic conference. Um, so we've got like nine games left. Um, and I think we're currently sitting in fourth place at the time of this recording. Mm -hmm. um, we are. What, what do you, what do you think about, cause I know it's hard to, uh, look back if you will because we you're in the middle of it but what do you think about how the team has performed up until this point of the season oh i'm so proud of these guys man i'm so proud these guys are fighting uh you know we're i think we're probably you know of the the upper teams in the league we're we have to be the one of the younger teams mm -hmm. you know every i'm looking at norfolk that we, we're about to get ready to play this yes. weekend and I mean, it's senior, it's senior, it's senior, it's junior. You know, I'm looking at, you know, Morgan State, you know, I'm looking at Coppin State, and I'm looking at all these teams and I'm saying, well, we're starting a true freshman. You know, I started a true freshman who's our leading scorer. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm talking about uh, two COVID freshmen, 
that's yeah. that's playing. You know what I mean? So we only have, we know we got one grad transfer that starts. So I'm looking at our team and I'm like, hey, we're right what we're trying to do be to to build this program the right way. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and so it's it's a lot of things that that of course here in South Carolina State that we got to try to uh, improve on. And probably the biggest thing is scholarships because you know we're we're a program that we don't have 13 full scholarships. Okay. Wow. And and that's you know that's a disadvantage to to what we're trying to do. Uh, if I, you know, because, you know, you, you're playing guys that are on basically walk-ons that you're wow. playing uh, serious minutes and, you know, that's, that's hard to do, but we're not going to complain. Uh, I knew that when I took the job, so we're going to fight and do everything we can, but, but, you know, but these guys are doing everything I want them to do. And like I said, man, I'm so proud of these guys. As you should be. I think we're all are, because like I said, coming off a season where we only had one win and now we're at 10, uh, that says a lot. And for the team to be as young as we are, you know, those saying, coach, you, you, you can, if you lose with freshmen and sophomores, you'll win with juniors and seniors. So I, I really and truly believe that that's where we'll be. I did not know that part about the scholarships. Wow. That's, that's interesting. So you, you're making a lot with, you know, with what you have. Um, so as we get into the conference play, what are your goals uh, that you set kind of for the rest of the way? Because, we're in a good position, to be honest, Coach. We're in a really good position, and I'm, I'm sure you want to, you know, develop some momentum going in, into the conference tournament. So, what are the goals, kind of going forward uh, from the, from this point? Well, it's to find a way to win games. You know, it's going to be one of those deals. Like, you know, we we open up the the, the league play at home. Uh, we lose two at home to Coppin State and the Morgan State, and you know, and those are two. Of, you know, they all though those teams were picked, I think, fourth and second. Uh, preseason. Norfolk is picked first. Uh, I think Central is picked third. So we will play, open up the league with, you know, basically the top three teams, you know? So it was tough. It was tough for those two home games, especially that Morgan State game yes. where they hit a, they hit a shot at the buzzer to send it to overtime. Mm-hmm. And then uh, overtime, we just didn't make enough plays. So, so, you know, so you lose those two home games. Uh, and then you got to go on the road and you're 0 and 2. And you know about it in college basketball, man, going on the road is so hard to do. Yes. I don't care what level you are at, but it's so hard to do. So for us to go on the road and win those two games on the road, uh, and we didn't, especially that Dell State game, we didn't play very well. Uh, we had a lot of adversity. We had our, our starting five man uh, get, get hurt the first play of the game, mm. didn't finish the game. We had uh, a starter uh, foul out. We had another starter got injured. So, I mean, it was a lot of adversity going on in that game. So we were just trying to find a way, which we did. Uh, so, so I guess the message for the rest of the, the the league play is to just to find a way to win a game, man. No matter what it takes, uh, no excuses. Uh, yeah. Play hard, play your butt off, and 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 whatever happens, happens. Indeed, indeed. Uh, you are in a position where you know, unlike any other coach that has preceded you, you are in a situation where you're in the middle of a pandemic, just like the rest of us. Uh, how have you and the team and the faculty and and the staff? Uh, dealt with COVID and, and the COVID outbreaks and, and kind of keeping everybody safe. Uh-oh. Give me one second. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me? I got you. Okay. How have you, uh, how have you dealt with the team as far as COVID is concerned and, you know, keeping everybody safe and healthy? Man, we're trying our best. First of all, we're one hundred percent vaccinated on my team. Okay. Uh, so that's you know that's that's big. Uh, another part of it is we're probably uh, over over fifty percent that has gotten a booster. So you know we're so we're on track to try to do everything we can to try to you know <laughs> to finish this season out. So we're trying to do everything we can, man. You know all the the protocols and safety issues that we have on campus and with our administration. So we're trying to do everything we can to make sure we we can finish this season. Good point. That's a good point. And, and I mean, you know, I know that that's, that's hard for everybody to navigate because we're all in the same boat, you know, trying to stay uh, COVID free and trying to stay healthy. Um, as an alum, and, and I'm going to ask this on behalf of, you know, the millions of alumni uh, uh, from South Carolina State across the, the country and the world. Um, you mentioned the scholarships and everything. Obviously, that deals with finance. Uh, mm-hmm. Is there anything that you need from us? What can we do to help uh, get us financially to where we need to be as far as support, uh, whether it be at the games, whether it be, you know, sending money. Uh, what is it that you need from us? Because we want to help. All of the above. Okay. Everything that you can imagine being a former, you know, bulldog to, to help this program. 
But I think you know, with basketball, and I, I'm not speaking for anybody else but us, for me it's basketball, is that scholarships. I mean, because like I said, if, if you're looking at, you know, we have eight full scholarships when, you know, probably everybody else in our league has 13. Okay. And that's, that, that's, 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 a, that's a low number. That's a low number for what, for what you're trying to do. So, you know, I think that's the, the biggest deal for, for me and my program. Okay. Now, I would, I would be remiss, Coach, if I didn't ask. Uh, your son, TJ, is on the team. Uh, mm -hmm. He is the current leading scorer on the team at a little bit more than 12 points a game. Uh, he's a freshman, uh, tall kid, 2'6'3". Um, I got to ask because I have, a, I have one son in college and one son in grad school now. Um, and my kid, and, and they didn't play basketball, but, you know, when we get out on the basketball court, you know, they want to challenge dad. They want to, yeah. you know, see <laughs> dad can hoop. Now, dad is only 5'7". I don't know how tall you are, coach, but mm -hmm. I'm sure that you're, you're taller than me. Um, has TJ challenged you recently, or when's the last time you played against him? I guess that's the question I should ask. I, I got you. No, I'm 6'2". Okay. Uh, but, yeah, the last time we played one-on-one, -on -one, I think we were at – uh, probably my at Ole Miss. Okay. So that was somewhere between 2014, 2018. Okay. Uh, I barely won, <laughs> and I said I'm never playing you again. So, so, so it. So that's been a long time. He's challenged me before, and I'm will not. I, I, I'll never play him one on one again. Ever. Smart, smart man, coach. Smart man. Because yeah, you know it. now he wants to. Because I, I even tell tell my sons about how. <clears throat> Uh, and I still tease my dad about this to this day. I was 13 years old and he he said, OK, well, hey, let's let's play. You get two of your friends. I'll get two of my coworkers and we'll come over. And he came over to play. And coach, we ran him off the court. I mean, we were throwing alley oops and we could we weren't dunking mm -hmm. or anything, but we were just it was just that level of pride of having uh -huh. one up on your dad. So like, yep. I, don't, I don't even play my kids in Madden, coach. I, I, I don't want to lose because my kids talk trash. So uh, so we, we try to keep it real competitive in the house. Um, yep, same way here, man. Same way. <laughs> uh, last thing before we get you out of here, coach, um, just on a lighter note, uh, we talk a lot about I talk a lot about music on the podcast. I know you mentioned Orange Mound. Uh, mm -hmm. I know some famous uh, rappers from Orange Mound being 8-Ball and MJG. Now, I know that your kids on your team probably listen to music that's probably not of your era. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure that you probably don't listen to the music of their era. So when it's game time or when it's downtime and you put something on, what, what are you listening to, Coach? A ball, MJG. You just <laughs> said it. No, but I'm I'm, I'm an old old school guy, man. So uh, I'm I'm with Jay Z. Okay. I'm, I'm with I'm with Nas. I'm with Biggie, Tupac, those guys, man. And uh, you know I like my R&B also, but I, mm -hmm. I'm I'm with those guys. But like I said, when you talking about rap, man, I'm with I'm I'm with the uh, A ball, MJG, man, Orange Mountain all day. I feel you, coach. I, the the Lils and the Youngs, uh, you know, they have their place. I just, I, you got to be able to rap. I, you mentioned Jay Z <laughs> and Nas. That those cats came out when we were in school, you know. So yeah, no it, doubt, it, it's a little bit different. And and I definitely rocked a ball and MJG. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely love talking about music and 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 love hearing and seeing the vibe that kids have when they come out on the court. Um, the uh, I, I guess the biggest thing now right now is, is the transfer portal. And so you got kids moving all over. You see it a lot in football. You see it a, a, quite a bit in basketball as well. Um, the question I have for you is I know that generally speaking, kids are kids. Basketball players, much like football players, they want to be coached, at least the great ones. Um, you, mm -hmm. you, you recruited a kid uh, that's in the NBA right now, uh, James Wiseman uh, of the uh, Golden State Warriors. He's hurt, but he's coming back. And personally, I think once he gets back and gets acclimated to what they're doing, I think the Warriors probably could win the title. Um, so even saying that, how do you how is it when you have to deal with all with because kids have so many distractions and everything? How do you keep the kids focused on what's important while they're at South Carolina State? And that's a tough job, you know, because, you know, you, you, you have a rotation. Like I told these guys when I first got the job, you're probably go, I'm probably going to out, out of. 15 guys on the team, I'm probably going to play eight, nine guys at the most, maybe 10, but that, that ninth and 10th guy, are not, their minutes are very going to be suspect. So it just depends on foul situations, you know, somebody's hurt, injured, or whatever the case may be. So I told him from day one, if you want to play, you got to find a way to get into that top eight guys. Guys, guys 9, 10 through 15, I mean, your minutes are going to be suspect. In some games, you won't, you won't get in the game. Mm -hmm. So with today's society, you know, everything now is about 
now, now, right, now. Right. So that's why that transfer portal is like it is. Uh, you know, back in my day, you come in as a freshman and you hope you get on the floor. You pray you get on the floor. <laughs> your sophomore year, you get a little bit more burned. Then maybe you're starting by your junior and senior year. That's how it used to be. Mm-hmm. Well, those days are done because now as coaches, as recruiters, you know, we, we got to tell these guys, oh, hey, you're going to come in. You got you got a chance to start. You know, you come in and then they're not as good or they're not ready to start. And then now they're ready to leave after their first semester, mm-hmm. after that first year. And so, you know, so it's just a different time. Uh, you see it around the country in AAU and high school, yeah. how many times these kids are leaving and playing for four or five different high schools. How does that happen? You know, how do you play for three or four different AAU programs? How does that happen? Because, hey, it didn't work out. I'm leaving. I'm going somewhere else. And so that's the society we live in now. Uh, so we just have to deal with it. So like I said, that transfer portal, it will never stop. It's going to go. It's going to continue every semester, every year to continue to grow. That's a great point, Coach. That's a great point. I mean, and it, it's so many things that can distract the kid uh, from NIL deals to uh, social media and how they handle themselves and things of that nature. And, and it's, it's, let's be honest, it's a lot harder than it was when we were coming up, but we had it harder. So I, I totally understand where you're coming from in that, in that aspect, coach. Uh, I got to thank you again for coming on the 12 Kyle podcast. I really appreciate it. Uh, like I said, I live in Atlanta. I have not been to a basketball game, man. It's been a couple of years, but I'm going to make it my business to try to get, if I can't make it this season, I'll make it next season, buy a ticket or something like that and send it to somebody. Cause we got to definitely support you coach. Anything that you want to say before you get out of here, man, I appreciate you. First of all, Kyle, for having me on, man, not to all the Bulldog nation, man, who who's been reaching out and trying to support, man, we've had some games in, in Charleston this year and man, it, the Bulldogs has, have shown out. We played in Rock Hill when we played Tubby Smith in high point. We had a lot of fans there, man. So man, we're just, we're just thrilled to be here. Uh, love everything about, about Orangeburg, it's a smaller version of Memphis to me. Okay, uh, to be real, to be honest with you, so proud to be here, man, in South Carolina State, uh, to be a part of the community here in Orangeburg, man. We're just gonna try to find a way to win games, man, and make make everybody proud. Definitely, coach, and I mean, you know, the vibe on campus, I'm sure, is is really high right now, especially with the football team winning the Black College National Championship. So, uh, you know, Coach Pugh got it done. So, you know, we're not gonna put any pressure on you to win a, 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 a MEAC title just yet, coach, but um. I definitely see the potential. I like what you guys are doing and and you got my support a thousand percent. I got to thank uh, coach Raheem Waller who set this up. Raheem and I were in school together. Uh, he was a star on the basketball team while I played football. And um, you, you definitely got my support coach uh, much success to you the rest of the season. We're going to be watching. Hopefully we get on a run here and uh, the MEAC tournament is coming up and you know, once you get in the dance coach, I mean, anything can happen, you know, from your days at Memphis state. Um, but I want to thank you again for coming on. I definitely appreciate it. And we're going to continue to support you. And I want to thank everybody for tuning in to this edition of the 12 Kyle podcast. Uh, so for coach mad dog, they told me that that's what they call you. Coach mad. Dog. <laughs> coach, <laughs> coach, Thanks for coming on again. I'm your boy, 12 Kyle. We'll catch you guys next time. Five. Man, I appreciate you. Peace. No problems, coach. All thanks. Right.